Hi there, this is Danny, and the channel is You and Me Living Free. Today I'm going to tell you about a little girls trip that I took with my friends. There is Margaret on the left in the red and Carol Jean on the right who is taking the picture. In the back is our glorious Airbnb, and I'll show you a video of some of the yard and everything in a minute. We're basically in Ozark National Scenic Riverways in southern Missouri. Somewhere around the center of this map is Eminence, Missouri, and that is where our Airbnb is. That was kind of our base of operations, and where we went kayaking the next day was close to that. So while this video plays, I just want to kind of set the scene because you know with me it's kind of always about the story behind the story uh this wasn't just about a girl's trip it was kind of what what happened so i'd been on a very long trip right before this we had to book the cabin the airbnb months in advance because it's a very in-demand spot so i was kind of just letting the responsibility for this trip i was kind of along for the ride you know when i'm driving myself in my van doing trips there's a lot of research there's a lot of planning there's a lot of you know i have to decide where i'm going to sleep every single night there's a lot of responsibility on this trip i really just wanted to be a passenger so i said you guys pick the place, you pick what we do, let me know how much money to send you and literally I, I will do it. I just wanted to be a passenger. I had been traveling and stuff and I wanted to kind of just give away responsibility a little bit and go along for the ride, okay? So that is what I did. We got here, this place is glorious. I'm like, you guys did a great job. The plan was the next day we would go kayaking. And then after that, we would see a bunch of the sites, go to some of the springs. There are many, many springs in this area and there's a huge aquifer underneath underground where all of this natural spring water comes to the surface. So there are lots of beautiful things to see and just the drive through the rolling forests and everything is glorious as well. So this is me getting settled in that first night. Here's the living room and me having a beer. Everything's glorious. We're getting ready to go kayaking the very next day. So we're driving to kayak. We've picked up our kayaks. We're driving to put into the river and we are on this narrow gravel road and there's our van off to the right. I don't know if you can really tell from the video from this picture, but it has gone off the road and it is so steep down there that we cannot get it out. So we're going to need some help. So while we were on the side of the road, we decided to take a couple of pictures as we waited. And then this, actually the guy who kind of was coming the other way and was there when we got pushed off the road, he came back with this tractor to help pull us out. He's a farmer. He lives there. It was his land off to the side. And so he came back to pull us out. But we made the most of it while we were stopped there. There was this old barn and we were taking pictures and everything was kind of fun. We had a good attitude about it because, you know, things can go wrong. No, nope, not a big deal. But I remember thinking to myself, I hope this isn't a foreshadowing of what's going to happen once we're on the water. And as you can probably discern from the title of the video, something did happen. So this is us before and we're paddling along, but it didn't take long to realize that there are rapids on this river. Now, that sounds really stupid to be saying right now that I did not realize until I was on the river that there were going to be rapids on this kayaking trip. And looking back, I can see that the whole reason that I didn't realize this was because I was like, I do so much research and have so much responsibility when I'm traveling alone. But the thing is, I gave up that sense of responsibility and I let it slide because I was just in my mind. I didn't do any research and I just assumed. I made a huge assumption that this river would be like the other rivers that I had been on, which were completely rapid free, that were just completely more like definitely like a float trip than a rapid than a than a rafting trip. Like these were lakes that I had been on that were completely calm and would just gently carry you along. 
I didn't realize I was on a river with rapids and this is completely my fault, but I did zero research and very quickly realized that I had no business being on this trip at all. And here's what happened. Of course, I have no footage of the actual tip over. What I do have is just a couple of little blurry uh, videos from after the fact. There's my kayak on one side of the river. There's the current that I went through and got flipped in. And there I am literally sitting in the water and I'm traumatized. Um, I was kind of freaking out. I was shaky. Um, I had hurt my knee and my elbow and my toe and I was just very shaken up. I was sitting there on the ground with my kayak across the river and I'll tell you what happened as best as I can but I knew to avoid this tree, this entire tree, which you can see some of the roots up there and you can see a little bit of the rapid around it. But I had no idea of the current and the pull of the water and the strength of that water. I had no experience with anything like this. So I had no idea what to expect. I knew I couldn't go around it because, just because of the way things happened. Like we were, I was, following too closely to my friend in front and she was kind of sort of where I needed to be and I panicked okay and so in that moment I had zero experience I didn't know how water how strong the water was going to be I thought maybe I could kind of run into that tree and I could steady myself and wait and push myself off of it and get around that is literally what I thought in my head and I was completely wrong so as soon as I got up to the tree and put my oar out to steady myself, I realized, boom, and I was over in a flash. But the thing was, I wasn't just over. Everything in the kayak dumped out. That was all actually fine. But what happened was I was pulled under and this completely freaked me out and I was in a panic. I came up gasping for air, but when I came up, I was under the kayak. So it was dark and it was scary. And I'm flailing around and over there, even though it is really shallow on the bank there where I'm sitting, there in the water, it was very deep. I couldn't get a foothold to push myself up to get away and around from this kayak because the current was pulling us both in the same direction. So I literally had a few seconds of being pulled under the water. It seemed like a lot longer, but in reality, it was a few seconds. Then when I did come up, I'm hitting my head on the kayak and I can't get air. So I'm completely freaked out. The current is, is pulling me in again. And I, I, I really, it was literally some of the scariest moments of my whole life. If I think about moments where I've been more scared, I, really nothing comes to mind. That night while I was trying to go to bed, every time I would shut my eyes, I would think of coming up under the dark kayak. And it, it's, been, it's just been kind of traumatizing. And the pictures now look so calm and so serene, but in that moment, I've never been more afraid. I want to say a huge thank you. I have so much gratitude for my friends during this time right here because Carol Jean, who you see there with me, managed to grab my paddle, <laughs> my backpack, and both of my shoes. And my hat somehow stayed around my neck through all of this. My cell phone was gone forever. At that moment, I cared zero about my cell phone, completely zero. Now it would hit me later, the impact of this, but I cared zero. Then there's my kayak still across the river. Margaret went to retrieve my kayak after all this. I was so shaky. Here's what, you guys. I was only 15 minutes into this whole trip by the time I capsized. That meant I needed to get collect myself get back in that kayak and do another hour and a half or so on this river. I cannot tell you how hard that was, but I had no choice. Right after it happened, I was talking to Carol Jean and I was asking her if she had cell reception. I was asking her if someone could come and pick me up. I mean, there was no way I could see myself doing this. And not just I have to do another hour and 45 minutes on this river, but this river was full of rapids. This river was full of hazards and trees and rocks, mostly trees. 
they happened. I, I don't even, I, I can't even count how many times that happened. We would float along and things would be smooth. And then all of a the sudden there would be another rapid. I could hear it coming from a mile away and I would start to, the tension would start to raise in my body. It was rough. And the whole time I'm trying to make the best of it, like it happened, try to make it to the end, try to relax when the river is calm, try to really think my way through when the rapids came, but I was tense. And you know what happens when you go through something kind of traumatic, you get all amped up and then all you want to do is sleep. Like after you come down from that, you have all this adrenaline. I was, I was literally scared for my life. I wanted to curl up into a little ball. I wanted to be dry and I wanted to be safe and I wanted to be on dry land and, and I had to complete this trip. So that's what I did. I got back on the horse. Actually, Margaret switched kayaks with me because I realized mine was the most unstable plus being the most overweight and everything that I was it was just a very bad combination so she was nice enough to switch kayaks with me and I'm telling you when I saw this sandbar that meant we were at the end of our journey I was crying happy tears I was so happy to be on land I can think about it right now and just cry I'm so relieved just relieved to feel the earth beneath my feet to know I was done with that and who knows when I'll get on a kayak again I mean honestly I love kayaking but I just put myself in a bad situation that I was not prepared for I did not do any research I did not take responsibility but I'm going to tell you after this I will definitely be um, doing more learning before the next time I get out on a kayak and I will know even if I'm on a lake even if I'm on an easy river I will know how to get on and off my kayak I will know what to do if it capsizes I will be as prepared as I possibly can be in this in these situations I have never been a big researcher. I've never been a big planner. I've always kind of been go by the seat of my pants and and go with the flow and things like that. But it's important in certain situations and I need to do more research. I needed to prepare myself and I needed to take responsibility. And so it was a huge learning experience and I'm grateful for it. So we were, our plan was to see more of the springs, more different attractions that day and then the next day as well. And I was even going to maybe stay an extra day in my van so that I could do some further exploring. I'm going to tell you the truth here. I don't even remember what spring it was we went to the next day. That afternoon, I took a shower and just curled up into a ball and Margaret and Carol Jean went out exploring. This is another spring that we went to the next morning and it was beautiful. There's a little area here that is the a little pond where the spring water pools and it would have been a perfect little swimming pond if we were there a little bit later because it was gonna be a nice warm day and that clear, gorgeous water. So this was delightful, but here's the honest truth. At this point, I had lost my cell phone and I couldn't get on there to uh, to take pictures of anything I was doing. I couldn't get on there to find directions to any place I wanted to go. And I kind of just wanted to go home. I wanted the safety of home. And then I wanted to figure out what to do about my cell phone, figure out how much data and information I had lost. Another big thank you to Margaret and to Carol Jean because the only part of this video that I took was the selfie of me with the beer in the cabin. That was literally the only picture that I had that was saved from my camera. All the rest of this is their footage. Margaret had all the video and I was able to get pictures from both of them. So <laughs> I managed to get home and everything was okay, but boy, what a trip. What a trip and the canoe ride taught me a lot you know I guess that's all you can do you're if you're out there experiencing life you're gonna make mistakes things are gonna happen you just have to learn what you can and move on and make the best of it so I feel like that's what I'm doing and that is the end of the behind the scenes story to our trip 
to the Ozark. So thank you so much for being here. I'll catch you next time.